It's that time of year again where we break out the top 10 list and go back and take a look at some of the cool guns that came out in 2019. Now a lot came out, so I compiled my personal top 10 for this year. Hope you guys enjoy it. Let's get on to it. So let me qualify this top 10 list. This list is my personal list. What I thought was really cool in 2019. I'm sure you guys have your own thoughts too and I'm welcoming you to let me know all your thoughts in the comment section. Number two, I'm not talking about like, you know, the best quote unquote gun or, you know, the best seller of 2019. What I'm talking about is something that make you turn your head, make you go, wow, or make you go, man, you know what? That was pretty cool. So that's how we're gonna determine this list. With that said, let's get right into it. Starting with number 10. Number 10, the EMG John Wick TTI gas blowback pistol. John Wick was probably one of the best movies of 2019 with eye candy galore for gun lovers everywhere. The movie takes credit for promoting three gun and practical shooting culture to the mainstream. And while tactical and racy 1911s have been around for decades, it wasn't until Keanu Reeves started using the Terran tactical race pistols as an assassin John Wick before everybody else started wanting to do something similar. Made by WE under license from EMG, this pistol exploded onto the airsoft scene in late 2019, shortly after the John Wick 3 movie hit the silver screens everywhere. But was Keanu Reeves really the first assassin to be running a race pistol in movies? Some of you may remember the Hong Kong movie Double Tap starring Leslie Chung, released in the year 2000, that featured Chung as an IPSC shooter and turned assassin. And a little known fact is that our own airsoft surgeon was actually the firearms consultant for that millennium flick. Number nine, the GHK 553 QPQ GBBR. Not only is it not just another M4, but it's a stylish Swiss design rifle that is sleek and functional all at the same time. For seasoned GBBR lovers and collectors who are tired of the plethora of different M4 GBBRs out there, this might have been one of the most anticipated releases of the year. Boasting superb build quality and a crisp mechanical three round burst, this will wet the pants of true GBBR aficionados. The QPQ version also has a railed handguard up front, which was missing from GHK's original release of the 553. Now it may not be everybody's cup of tea and it doesn't belong to the popular M4 AK platform, but the SIG definitely exudes a retro flair from Hollywood films of the last decade. Number eight, the Sistema Type 89. PTW. Sistema was actually approached by the Japanese Self-Defense Force to create an airsoft rifle used for their training purposes. Sistema, being Sistema, decided to make the most technologically advanced airsoft rifle in the world, and this is what they came up with. Of course, being the most technology advanced, close quote, has a price tag. And while it may not be the dream rifle for you, it surely made a splash in the Japanese domestic market, which is where airsoft all started. Hats off to Sistema for having the balls to build this. And it's asking for a kidney or two in return. Number seven, Glock 17 Gen 5 by Umarex and VFC. The Glock 17 Gen 5 is unique on this list because how fast it was able to come from real steel into airsoft. Usually when we see launches in the real steel world, we hope to God, we pray to the airsoft lords above and maybe they'll bless us with a release three years down the road. But what it feels like it's just yesterday that the Gen 5 launched and today we have a Gen 5 gas blowback pistol. That's, that's crazy. So of course we had to include these Glock 17 Gen 5 on this list simply for the fact that, wow, like when was the last time you seen an airsoft launch or turnaround that was this quick? I can't remember. Number six, the Silverback Desert Tech HTI. When people think about Silverback, they automatically gravitate to the sniper rifle, the SRS, which has been out for a few years. Silverback has been synonymous with quality and performance and has been the go-to gun for serious snipers around the world. So when they came out with the HTI, it 
dispelled any notion that Silverback is a one-hit wonder brand. Big sniper rifles in Airsoft have in the past focused more on style and substance, such as the SOCOM Gear M82 and of course the M200. And these were really impressive, but they were not focused more on the gaming or practicality aspect. Silverback has managed to do both with the HTI, packing impressive out-of-the-box performance and amazing upgrade potential in this beautifully big bore package. A big platform means big springs and big cylinders to create big power. <laughs> it's a slap to the naysayers out there who always say, oh, I don't need a big rifle to shoot far or <laughs> less is more, LOL. Silverback proves with the HTI that bigger is better. Number five, the RWA BAD gas blowback rifle. Every list needs a Gucci gun, so we'll shamelessly put the RWA BAD GBBR right here because honestly, it did make a big splash in certain parts of the world for fashion forward GBBR collectors. It was released in very limited numbers, so it's entirely possible that you only see in this beautiful M4 for the first time right now. BAD is known for making super light and low recoiling M4s, designed and tested by a group of scientists instead of, you know, badass war heroes. The style is very eye-catching and has spawned numerous copycats in past years, and it's here on the list because of its design influence. The verse stock has inspired many similar stocks made by APS and Ares, and some outright copies by clone makers, while the triangular lines on the receivers have also inspired specific models from G&G &G and APS as well. So when this fully licensed version with all the right details was released, Let's just say all produced models were spoken for before it even hit the shelves. Number four, the Glock 19X and Sig Air P320 M17. Whoa, 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 okay, okay. Now, the reason why I put two pistols in one category here at our number four is because I felt like the Glock 19X and the M17 deserve equal footing for this one. They both participated in the new pistol program that the United States put forth several years ago, even though the M17 won. They both have a good amount of significance in the airsoft field as well as in the real steel field. And of course, these two basically came out in the same year. I felt like it would be only fair if I shared it with one, I had to include the other. They're both apt guns. They're both created for the same purpose, even though my boy, the M17, took the crown on this one. Number three, the Wolverine MTW Complete Rifle. HPA has been on the market for some time and it has been getting extremely popular, but early adopters had to fuss with getting the HP engine, finding a donor gun, getting the right gas tank, installing the engine and making sure everything lined up right and hoses and wiring and, well, you, you get the point. Frankly, this was a bit daunting for some less technical inclined people. I'm talking to myself here. So Wolverine decided to come out with a complete training weapon so that you can just take it out the box. Now on that same note, Polar Star did come out with a complete rifle too, but I got the MTW first and it gave me an opportunity to spend more time with it and get familiar with that one. And that's why it's right here on number three. I also feel like the MTW is like a paradigm shift for Airsoft, making these things much easier and much more accessible for you guys, the players. Number two. SR25 ECC. The SR25 ECC, what more can I say? What a fantastic gun to shoot. Incredible recoil impulse. The accuracy was superb. I really enjoyed the URX rail that they had on there. It just, there's something about it that just really spoke to me personally and my enjoyment of this style of battle rifle. And I think it's so cool that VFC is able to bring such a great gas blowback rifle out this year. What a surprise. Now the whole reason why you would get a gas blowback rifle over an AEG is because you're looking for that more realistic shooting experience. You want to look for that strong and, and loud recoil. Every time you pull the trigger, you want it to hit you in the shoulder or you know make your ears ring. And I felt like the SR25 ECC and VFC and the team behind it really delivered on this because every time you pull the trigger, it bring a smile to your face, also a ring to your ears. And the last time, I, I can't really even remember the last time I shot a gun that gave me that kind of feeling or made me go semi-deaf. Good job, 
This is why SR25 ECC is number two. For our honorable mentions, the GHK Mark 18. Yes, another M4 GBBR, but superb build quality and shooting performance makes this a standout in a sea of competitors out there. EMG Hudson H9. Hudson gave us a modern take on a 1911 pistol, but unfortunately, they've gone bankrupt after just one year, making this a beautiful and unique piece of history. The Tokyo Marui Lightning Hawk. Because every Resident Evil biohazard pistol ever made by Tokyo Marui has somehow turned into a collector's item, and we're sure this one is gonna be no exception. The RWA Agent 1 with only 95 pieces of this ultra limited edition pistol ever made, is designed for serious collectors who want exclusivity. Commander size Airsoft 1911s are not common in the first place, so that this itself caught my eye. Exclusivity doesn't come cheap, but I'm sure you'll agree with me that is truly a remarkable looking pistol. Number one. Humorex VFC MP7 AEG. The number one spot may come to a surprise for some of you guys, some of you may not. The Humorex VFC MP7 AEG is such an interesting and awesome piece of technology, I feel like it almost needs to be in a category of its own. While some may have argued that no, it's an AEP, um, I can't agree with that because it is a full AEG in every sense of the word. They've redesigned the gearbox to fit in this small chassis. Just imagine how small the MP7 is to fit a full gearbox in there. And not only did they fit a full gearbox in there, it performed out of this world. The semi-auto was very responsive. The full auto was like a hose. And when you compared it to the previous standard bearer, or the benchmark of the Airsoft Scorpion Evo 3, a1 SMG, I don't want to say it made the Evo look bad, but it certainly gave it a run for its money and made an incredible case for itself, the MP7. So what does this also mean? Yes, it's kind of a double-edged sword that with this incredible design and um, design innovation and engineering, it's proprietary. Now proprietary is another word for innovation. And you're gonna have to give VFC a bit of props here by not just copying Tokyo Marui and throwing in another standard gearbox in this gun. Because, you know, they really did take a risk and make something that's truly unique and truly their own and made this particular AEG something very, very special. Now, yes, it does have a bit of drawback. That means it doesn't get to enjoy a lot of the upgrade parts and aftermarket performance upgrade parts that may be available to other Tokyo Marui or Tokyo Marui compatible gearboxes. Now, it is my wish that hopefully aftermarket parts manufacturers would make other goodies to boost the performance or help with the performance of this particular AG because I feel like there is something really special here. And that's why the VFC MP7 AG is at the top of the list. But hey, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. I'm dying to hear y'all's top 10 for 2019. And I may be able to see you guys there in the comment section. We can strike up a conversation. And if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. And if you think it was cool, don't forget to share it with your friends. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button and that notification bell so we can let you guys know every time we have new videos coming out. And if you want cool products like all of these, in 2019, don't forget to check out our online store at www.rebelfairsoft.com. My name is Mark, aka Blue Steel, and I'll catch you guys on the next episode of Red Wolf TV. Have a good one.